that uh, Larry and I don't share our comments with each other because some of what we've said would be somewhat repetitive, which I guess is a good thing. At least we're all on the same page. But good morning, parents, class of 2015, and happy Ramadan. Um, please allow me to extend to you a very warm welcome to Duke. Actually, we were so fortunate yesterday with the weather. As you know, this has been an unbearably hot summer across the country, and we anticipated that move-in day yesterday would be no different. It is usually, in Durham, North Carolina, the hottest day of the year. But the weather gods are with us, and the warm weather, or the warm welcome, I should say, yesterday actually came from what we consider to be the amazing, engaging, accommodating, and helpful students who greeted you and helped you and your students move in. These students, the FAPS, or the First Year Advisory Counselors, are the ones who should truly be thanked for making yesterday successful. They are led by two senior students, I want you to know their names, Nate French and Monica Vitani, and I ask you that you join me once again in thanking them for all of their good work. <laughs> I am always amazed at the level of energy and enthusiasm that these students exhibit each year with their cheers, their dancing, and their love of life all while carrying refrigerators, microwave ovens, and other heavy items. I only can say, oh, to be young again. Although the facts did much of the heavy lifting yesterday, there were many others, as Larry said, a bit more behind the scenes, offering invaluable help and support. The RAs, the RCs, the GRs, the Deans, the faculty and residents, the program coordinators, the network that was available yesterday will be here for your student each and every day. This team was led by folks in new student programs and housing, dining, and residence life. You've already heard Clay Adams' name, but his staff with Sharon Logan and Michael Baragel, L.B. Bergeny, and Linda Moisenko have been, much like the Rose Bowl Committee, been preparing for this year's orientation program since last year, and I ask you to thank them as well. I hope knowing that all of these individuals and 100 more, 100 more are here for you and your student brings you some comfort as you and we contemplate your departure from campus. Just a hint here, your departure from Duke today or tomorrow will be a recurring and not so subliminal theme in my remarks to you this morning. So I guess it's about time that I introduce myself to you a bit more formally. I'm Sue Waslick. I'm one of the Assistant Vice Presidents for Student Affairs, and I'm the Dean of Students. And I'm humbled today to have an opportunity to share some thoughts about your new role. You are now officially the parent of a college student. For many of you, this is not necessarily a new role, as you may have had another child engage in higher education before today. I suspect those of you in that position feel quite prepared while others who have not had that experience before may feel a bit more excited, even anxious, apprehensive, or perplexed. There are also many of you who are Duke alums. Again, I imagine that you have a fairly high level of confidence in your ability to provide special guidance to that newest Blue Devil in your family as you've been to this rodeo before. So why am I standing here? What is my purpose this morning? I don't even have any children of my own, but I have been at Duke for almost 40 years. I have heard every welcome to Duke, let me give you some tips on how to be the perfect parent of a college student's speech during that period of time. I have had some successes here, as well as some failures. I was an undergrad, I was a fac, I was an RA, I was a graduate student, I was a law student, and an administrator. And for those of you who are alums in the audience, well, let's just say I still have a copy of your disciplinary record. <laughs> Having worked with Duke students for almost four decades, I've had the great fortune of advising them, loving them, respecting them, being challenged by them, having fun with them, learning from them, and sometimes being frustrated by them. My one promise to you today is that I will not still be here when your grandchildren are joining the community. 
So here we are, getting ready to say goodbye to your Duke student. That's a little hint. I'm actually reminded that there are actually quite a few country song titles that mention leaving or loneliness after someone has left. I thought I'd share a few of those with you this morning. For example, how can I miss you if you won't go away? <laughs> or what about, I'm so miserable without you, it's almost like having you here. <laughs> I think one of the fun and maybe best ways for us to get prepared for the rest of today and the next four years, believe it or not, is for you to join me in singing a little song. That might make some of you a bit nervous. It actually makes me a bit nervous. But my mother used to sing a song to me when I was little. And today, at 92 years of age, she still sings this song and plays it on the piano. It may calm some of you. It may make some of you cry. While others may feel a sense of relief. So I ask you to join me in singing, all of you, even the fathers, you are my sunshine. Take a little risk here, that's what the answer to do. Okay? You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when the skies are gray. You'll never know, oh dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Our plan is not to take your sunshine away. And uh, we're going to do a little bit more than sing songs this morning. But uh, during the past summer, because of the unbearable heat, I found myself spending a bit more time indoors, reading, going to movies, and listening to music, a lot of country music. Um, and I was struck by the remarkable advice I found available to parents of college students in much of what I read and what I saw in the movies and listened to. And I'd like to share a little bit with you of, about this morning. First, let's start with a quote from a book, a movie, um, called The Help. How many of you have read or seen The Help? Very good. Um, to summarize, for those of you who haven't or are not familiar with this work, the book is set in Mississippi in the 1960s. Black women who spent their lives taking care of prominent Southern families, in particular raising children, their children, tell their stories. Abilene, one of the maids highlighted in the book, says, I done raised 17 kids in my lifetime. I know how to get them babies to sleep, stop crying, and go in the toilet bowl before their mamas even get out of bed in the morning. But I've never seen a baby yell like a name First day I walk in the door, there she'd be red hot and hollering with a colic, fighting that bottle like it's a rotten turnip. Her mother looked terrified of her own child. I took that pink, screaming baby in my arms, bounced her on my hip to get the gas moving, and it didn't take too many, two minutes for that baby girl stop her crying, got to smile up at me like she did. So what does this have to do with your new Duke student? Unlike the situation in the help, we do not consider our role with your student or our relationship with you to be one-sided. Instead, we see our association with parents to be one of a partnership where we work together to support your student. Rest assured, I'm not here to even suggest to you that you have been unprepared or uncaring in your role as a parent. You clearly know your son or daughter better than anyone else. Some of you, I'm sure, even think you know them better than they know themselves. Regardless of your knowledge of your students, um, we feel as though our newly gained knowledge and appreciation of them, as well as our many years of experience in working with college students, make for a perfect partnership with you. So we absolutely look forward to working together with you to support your student. Secondly, a book that I also read entitled Hannah's Child is written by a Duke professor, Stanley Harawas. As a Christian theologian from Texas, Dr. Howarloss writes his memoirs, stating, I applied to two colleges, Hendricks in Conway, Arkansas, and Southwestern University in Georgetown, Texas. In truth, I was not sure I wanted to go to college at all, he said. I did not want to leave my girlfriend. 
fearing that in my absence she would find someone new. But the ball had started rolling down the hill and it would have been hard to explain to my parents why I did not want to go to college. I was admitted to both schools. I chose to go to Southwestern, primarily because it was closer to home, making it possible for me to get back home more often to see my girlfriend. That reason quickly evaporated because she soon did find someone else. I was heartbroken for a week or two. I read this passage not to minimize the college selection process. I know that most of your sons and daughters probably applied to more than two schools. Nor do I want to downplay the importance of what used to be called a hometown honey. Instead, I want to point out to you that some of the decisions your student makes while at Duke may not make sense to you, particularly as you consider the long-term effects of these decisions. Nonetheless, it is important that you allow your son or daughter to make their own decisions. Trust the fact that you've done an outstanding job raising them while also recognizing that allowing them to fail gives them an invaluable opportunity to learn from their own mistakes. This is really hard to do. But as you're fretting over your student's decision, losing sleep, it's likely that your son or daughter has moved on. And that relationship, for example, that was once of utmost importance to them is suddenly a distant memory. Thirdly, as I mentioned a moment ago, I really do like country music, and the titles of country songs provide some great insight, I think, into life, even the college experience. More specifically, one of these titles makes reference to what might happen to your son or daughter in just a few days or a few weeks. Right now, everyone is, or should be, totally enamored with Duke. Your student worked diligently in high school to get admitted to a highly selected university. You were there to provide help and support, so you too, I suspect, feel a great deal of pride and joy in your student's new journey. But what happens after you leave, and you will leave, um, <laughs> classes begin, the workload becomes a reality, and the social scene on campus might be more challenging than your son or daughter expected. In other words, as the country song title suggests, I liked you better before I knew you so well. I guess this title could also describe a roommate who turned out to be less than expected, which reminds me of another country song title. You're the hangnail in my life and I can't bite you off. <laughs> we all know that neither Duke nor your student's roommate, nor the rest of the world for that matter, is perfect. And it's quite reasonable to expect that there may come a time when your student experiences something at or about Duke that he or she just doesn't like and expresses disappointment. This is not cause for panic on your part nor is it necessary to minimize the situation. Instead, it is a perfect time for you to encourage your student to visit with someone, a resource on campus, a professor, a dean, an administrator, a counselor, a coach. These individuals are here for your student. They have the necessary expertise and compassion to work with and advise your son or daughter. Again, this gives us the chance to do what we're trained to do and what we're responsible for doing and that is to advise and support your Duke student. It all sounds so simple. Recognize the partnership that you have available to you with this university. Let your students make mistakes and learn from them. Encourage them to take advantage of the remarkable resources available to them at Duke, and then leave campus, yes, I said it again, with a sense of confidence and comfort knowing that they are in very good hands up to this point, you and your son and daughter have traveled together to reach this destination with each of you having special memories of your dreams and joys, shared as well as the challenges faced and conquered. Regardless of your unique memories, there is a common thread among all these memories. You've cared about and been there for your student. Your assistance was not only needed to navigate the trip, but for several years, and in many ways, your student has been dependent upon you. So now here you are, 
proud and excited that your student is about to begin a new journey, a journey that if well traveled will become one of the most important and rewarding journeys your student will ever take, a journey that your student will navigate, a journey where he or she will depend on faculty, advisors, administrators, and peers more, and on you, the parent, less. For some of you, this realization may make the journey feel a little less exciting and maybe even a little frightening, perhaps now or as you are leaving campus, <clears throat> would be a good time for you to revisit memories from that time when it was you leaving home, going to college, or beginning a life on your own. There is such a delicate balance of being there for your student when he or she needs you and making decisions for them and not being there when they need to be doing those things on their own. We are here to help you strike that balance. So those are my words of wisdom, for whatever they're worth. In an effort not to shortchange you in the advice category, I decided to consult and test my advice with several current Duke students, and I'd like to quickly tell you what they suggested I share with you. There are five points. I'm going to go through them very quickly. They are consistent with the three I've already made. Students said, Allow me to make decisions that, yes, may prove in some ways not to be the best choices, but at the end provide real and lasting learning experiences that will help me cope well in life. The more you handle the little responsibilities and decisions for me, the harder it will be for me to handle larger responsibilities and decisions later on. My interpretation? Avoid feeling the need to provide your student every morning with a wake-up call, missing a class, a test, or some other academic obligation, may have significant consequences. It is only through, through being held accountable that we truly learn in life. Remember this, many of you were the very students who demanded that the notion of in loco parentis be abandoned, that colleges and universities be required to treat students as adults. Now you have a chance to practice what you at one point preached. Number two, the students say, support me in my decision to explore class options, opportunities to meet people from different cultures, religions, races, and backgrounds, because by doing so, I become exposed to so many different ideas. My interpretation, whether it is a roommate, another friend, or a significant other, let your student choose the person and people with whom they spend their time. Number three. Please be supportive parent of my interests so that our communication can remain open. So many of my friends are fearful of being criticized by their parents and being really, really hurt by their parents' rejection of their interests. Allow me to be true to myself. Interpretation? If your student's passion tends to be music or religion or art history, or he or she decides to major in one of these subjects instead of economics, or continuing as pre-med. Please let your student make that decision. According to academic and career advisors at Duke, a student's major is not really that important. But what is important is whether a Duke graduate can problem solve, can be a critical thinker, can communicate both orally and in writing in an effective way, be a team player, and understand and embrace the desire to be successful. Number four. Remember, parent, please, that I am the student. I am the one at Duke. I am the one experiencing life at Duke. I don't think all parents really can understand Duke. My interpretation? Your college experience, parents, has come and gone. And for those of you who are Duke alums, Duke has changed since you were here. <laughs> Except, of course, for the new students. <laughs> And number five, a student who answers the phone in our office in student affairs commented that parents are too involved in the day-to-day -day life of students. They call the office to seek assistance in how to manage certain areas of the student's life at Duke because they think their Duke student is too busy to deal with trivial matters. The student could and should have walked into or called our office, the student says, to find out the information for him or herself. Let your student work things out on his or her own. It builds confidence and independent thinking. Interpretation, don't be a smothering parent. Be available, be supportive, send care packages, but please don't hover. 
I know that you will trust your students to continue to develop some of the very best, to develop as some of the very best future leaders. And I know you will be supportive of their interests, even when they conflict with your dreams for them. Allowing them the opportunity to explore, grow, and perhaps even stumble during their journey at Duke is essential. So as we at Duke develop this partnership with you, we will continue to communicate with each and every one of you. Please know that you will receive emails from us. You've already received one from Dr. Mineta as well as monthly electronic parents' newsletters. However, in order to receive these communications, we will need your email addresses. In fact, we would love to have those addresses. So just ask your student to add your email address or your addresses to his or her electronic student record on ACES. You can also monitor what's happening on a daily basis at Duke by subscribing to the student newspaper, The Chronicle, or accessing the Duke website, duke.edu slash today. In addition, for those of you who wish to approach your new parental role in perhaps a more academic or intellectual way, I would strongly suggest that you take a look at a couple of books. The first is entitled Letting Go, and it's in its fifth edition. Letting Go, A Parent's Guide to Understanding the College Years. It's in a paperback edition. It's authored by Karen Coburn and Madge Trigger, and it's actually available over in the Gothic Bookstore. It is a great book that has guided parents of college students for decades. There's another book that I just learned about, and although I haven't read it, um, it has received quite a bit of press, some positive, some negative. It's authored by Gail Parent and Susan Endy. It's been called, as, it's, it's been called, as I said, a must-read by some and frankly, offensive by others. But the title is, How to Raise Your Adult Children. Uh, certainly a rather foreboding title, um, but I would suggest that you perhaps take a look. And if I might indulge you for just one additional brief moment, there is another book that I would like to, re to, like to recommend to you and your students entitled, Getting the Best Out of College. It's written by three Duke folks, um, as one of my colleagues say, it said, if you really want your student to get the best from their college experience, buy the book now. It, too, is available at the Gothic. Um, I happen to be one of those three authors, so thank you for allowing me to put in that little uh, commercial. It actually would make a great parting gift for your student, you know, as you're getting ready to leave. Um, there are just a few remaining things that I'd like to share with you. I know that many of you attended skits last night that our fact board put on, um, hosted by Gary Glass, one of our psychologists in our counseling center. Um, I know that one of the skits last year emphasized a point that I'd like to share with you now that probably was not emphasized last night, but uh, this is a skit that occurred last year. Um, it emphasized the need for you as a parent to just keep cool when your student calls in the middle of the night upset about just about everything in the world. You, of course, very naturally become upset yourself as you listen to your student describe how their life is falling apart. You are ready to travel to campus immediately, only to learn the next day that all is well with your student. You, in the meantime, have developed reflux, an ulcer, migraines, high blood pressure, and depression. So remember, when you get that phone call, keep cool, stay calm, take a deep breath, and wait a while before you respond. In other words, be the adult. I actually heard on NPR something that might put all of this type, this type of situation in its proper perspective. The reporter said to keep in mind that all college students today are actually minoring in drama. <laughs> I don't mean to trivialize some of the challenges your students might, might face. I'm merely suggesting that you take some time to assess the situation and contact us before you make a trip to campus. Although it is true that you will have to leave soon, oh God, I said it again, I want to extend an invitation to each of you to return to campus, as Dr. Manetta said, during our Parents and Family Weekend. That weekend is specifically October the 28th through the 30th. Online registration for the weekend will be available starting on September 6th, but as already mentioned, go ahead and make hotel reservations. 
We would truly love to see you back on campus and make certain that you also bring siblings of your Duke students as we'll have some special programming for them during that weekend as well. In closing this morning, I want to leave you with one thought and two well-known country songs. First, a thought. For those of you who will be experiencing an empty nest, something that you have been looking forward to for a very long time, I ask you to turn and take a look at your significant other if he or she is with you this morning. The moral of the story, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> And now for the first country western song, believe it or not, I'm going to sing the opening line of it for you. I don't know why, I'm not a singer, but I just get moved to do these things on orientation weekend. It was made famous by Kenny Rogers. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. Today, we ask you to hold them one more time, and then walk away. Let them begin this journey on their own. My colleagues in here, my colleagues and I are here to help them. They chose Duke at least in part because of all the very various resources that are available to them. Your role is to encourage them to access those resources. I and my colleagues look forward to this partnership with you and wish you the best as you watch your student change and grow. I invite you to proceed after these remarks to the Bryan Center to hear from the academic dean. <coughs> Parents of students in Trinity College of Arts and Sciences should go to the Reynolds Theater, while the students, um, uh, parents of students in the Pratt School of Engineering should move to the Griffith Theater. Reynolds, by the way, is on the upper level, and Griffith Theater is on the middle level of the Bryan Center. And finally, as we bid you farewell and safe travels, I leave you with the title of a second country western song made famous by the Oak Ridge Boys. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> Again, best wishes to all of you, and go home.